Start off with the juice. Yeah, juice is back. We're excited about it. You know, we're, we're talking about energy giving behaviors, you know, and that, that's what this thing is about. What are you doing out here to give energy to your teammates? And we went one young, one old, and one of them, the veteran, was is a culmination of what I've seen since January 1st. And he's come out here, and that was Shaw Smith Wade, and just was fantastic in his leadership and his preparation. He's over 180 pounds. He put 12 pounds on since January 1st, just excited about where he's at. And the other one was young. He should be in high school right now thinking about prom, but Carlos Hernandez was out here making plays. He's everything is advertised, young kid, just excited for his growth, and he's done everything right since he's been here. And those two guys was a culmination of a lot of work to get to this point. You know, just kind of have to ask, uh, you talked yesterday, uh, Christian was going to work a lot of tackle, and he was out there at guard, kind of just uh, doing, still doing a little cross training with him. Yeah, he, he will. Christian's one of our best five. Let, let's make sure that that's clear. And we're going to find that best fit. Um, we'll cross train him a little bit because I think he can handle it. Uh, but at the end of the day, what's going to be that best five? Christian's going to be a part of that. Uh, and is that a tackle? Is that a guard? We'll kind of find out. And that'll be all the way through August. You know, I want to ask about Zion Nunnally in particular. You kind of talked about him yesterday and his consistency and just kind of noticed today didn't drop any passes. I know that's kind of been a, a problem at times for him. I mean, what have you seen from his growth throughout the winter that maybe suggests that he's put that kind of maybe grown out of that a little bit? Well, I think he's come out of his shell first and foremost. And that means he's, he's comfortable with who he is. He's comfortable with who he wants to be. Um, but I think there's also a little bit of an expectation now that, hey, I'm the guy. Right, and I think there's, that's good. That's good for Zion, and we have expectations for him to go out there and make some big plays. And there were some good, you know, competitive balls. And I'm excited to see his growth throughout spring. But his chest is big. He's playing with confidence. He knows what he's doing now. And I think there's so much difference when you have belief. And I, I've talked about that a lot. But we believe in Zion and what he can do. And now he needs to go out there and show himself and his teammates what he's capable of doing. You one know, you mentioned his chest and notice on the roster he's 220 now. I mean that's he's almost tight end size a yeah, little bit. Yeah, we I talked to Coach Ben about that. We let some of these guys bulk up and it was a big time power and strength phase in that first eight, we, eight weeks. And we'll lean guys out as we go throughout the summer and spring practice. But uh, we need that big body X receiver, that red zone dominating guy, you know. And I think he can be that. What do you expect Cam uh, to have progressed most, or, or maybe what attribute do you think from from year to year has he? he, he seem to have made the most strides in? Well, I, I think the biggest thing is feet and arm and sink. You know, that's the biggest kind of combination that we've talked about. And I think that's going to improve accuracy and it's going to improve his arm speed and his deep passing. You know, we know we want to take the ball down the field. You saw that today. I thought in practice, you know, I don't have the charts, but you know, there's plenty of downfield throws. So anytime you can have your feet and arm and you add that talent to it in sync, right, you're going to have better accuracy. And I think, uh, you know, those deep ball throws are there. And then I want to see his leadership grow and develop. You know, and that is things where I've seen in the weight room. Now he's got to transition out here. We got a lot of new guys on offense. There's a lot of new receivers. There's a lot of young guys working in, and you know, there's going to be some mistakes. You know, so how is he going to raise the level of everyone else around him? That's expectation number one. For a quarterback in this offense, going going from last offense to this one, what do you think are kind of the the main learning points? Or well, I think the nice good? part is, you know, and I've said this before out in the press and the media, but it's about taking a step forward and not restarting. You know, there is some language things that are the same. There's some more gap scheme run. There's a little bit more 11 personnel dominated, which is where we've always wanted to go, and we'll see if we can. Con keep progressing that way um, you know but at the end of the day there's a lot of similarities uh, so excited about being able to just focus on a lot more details of technique than just saying hey language verbiage route running all that type of stuff so that's where I think he's going to take a big step for the quarterbacks you talked about those new receivers that is what are those those four new guys in particular the three Mountain West transfers what, what do they add and it's kind of a good problem problem to have having you know, I, I guess so much depth and not really knowing well, I just the top told, guys. I just told the guys, I, it was a little quieter than I would expect for a first day, but I think that's because this is the most competition I've probably ever had at positions going into a new season on any team I've ever been a part of, right? So I think that's a, I'm talking every position, O-line, receivers, tight ends, you know, D-tackles, who's going to be the linebackers, the nickel, I mean, the extra corner. I mean, there's so much competition happening. But, you know, Kyle Williams, I, I think you saw a streak down the sideline. Kyle is a vertical, linear guy. And that's what I mean. I think we've got more athletic out there. Josh Kelly, I think, gives you kind of that in intermediate route runner that can still take the top off.
Uh, Isaiah, you know, will, will yet to be determined, but I think he's got that inside fade feel and what he can do with screens and, and working and get vertical. And like I said, we're going to take a great look at Carlos Hernandez inside and outside and what he can do. And let's not forget Leighton Smithson. And there's a lot of guys out there competing their tails off. So excited about where that group can go, but really excited about the comp competitive nature that our team needs and that our team has right now. Coach, if there's one overarching thing that you want to accomplish or you want to see your team accomplish during the, the spring practice session, what is it? Number one is creating habits. Spring ball to me is about establishing habits in foundation, mentality, adversity training. It is about a baseline of how you're dealing with the little details. Okay, this spring camp is about little details because there are a lot of new guys. You know, this was. I'm never detailed coming into a practice this much either because I wanted this to flow. Right? This is not a veteran team, and that's okay. And, but I think as coaches, we know if we let little details slip, we're not going to get the results we need for 12 Saturdays in the fall. So that's the focus number one, standards over everything, and I thought we had a good start with that today. And I know you know you have so many important things you have to do in an off season, but does it feel nice to get back to this point? Oh, I didn't sleep last night. I'm gonna be honest with you. I was I was on spring break even last week. My wife on Thursday, she's like, "You're ready for spring ball." Like it's it's that time of year. If you're if you're a football person, you love it. Uh, there's days in between the learning, the technique. It's just there's nothing that matches it. So to get back out on the grass and to get back out outside, what a beautiful day! Uh, you can't you can't replace that. Coach, you talk about a lot of new guys in this roster, but speaking of new, you hired both an offensive and defensive coordinator uh, in the offseason. What has this kind of dynamic been like, the overall buy-in with this group with these new coordinators? I think consistency is key. I've said that before, and yes, we've had a lot of turnover in staff, and, but I'm really excited with our, our new coaches. I really am. I think they've bought in. Uh, to our program, they bought into our culture, they, they represent us really, really well, and they just dove into the details. You know, there's been a lot of work since they've been here to get to this point, and you know, there's a lot of things that a coach has to do, but to get ready for this moment, I think both of those guys have done a good job of, you know, I've used that 80-20, like 80% needs to stay the same, 20% needs to be new, um, but they got to put their stamp on it, right? It's their offense, it's their defense, but it's part of us as a whole, and I think those guys have done a great job doing those things. Yeah, and speaking of details, obviously Ben Arbuckle, the new offensive coordinator, he brings a lot of wealth and knowledge and experience. How do you want to see that kind of translate to Cam's game and uh, to improve kind of throughout the spring? I think someone asked me yesterday about that relationship, and that is a relationship that is formed on the grass. It's one thing in the meeting room, it's one thing in the workouts, but it's out here. And what I think I love about Coach Arbuckle, he's going to challenge Cam every day. And Cam needs that. Every player on his roster needs that. And, you know, that's not just a Cam thing. So I'm excited about that relationship and growing out here on the field and growing in those meeting rooms and growing through the wars together. And one thing we've challenged Cam on is, hey, this is your offense too. What do you like? What do you see? What, what plays can you get us into? And I think those are the things that the more they get in sync and see the game the same way, the better both of them will be. Yeah, and, and offense is new, but a couple of guys that aren't new are, are Brennan Jackson and R.J. Stone. How do you want to see kind of their leadership and experience translate to kind of these younger guys who are still kind of getting a feel of things on defense? Yeah, I mean, I couldn't be more proud of R.J. and B.J., and it's who they are as men. You know, it's how they have taken this extra COVID year and put a stake in the ground and are staples of our team and are really leaders of our team. So we'll go on defense as they go. And I think they've done a good job, more importantly, like, holding everyone else around them accountable to the way that we need to do things, right? And that's the habits that we talked about. That's the discipline it needs to, to win games. They know this is it. They know this is the last spring ball day one. Like They know that. So I think their urgency and their sense of what they want to is at an all-time high. And when your best players work the hardest, it's magic as a coach.